Okay, so The Last of Us season finale, we just got this past weekend. Kind of taking a few days just to kind of think about it and collect my thoughts into what will hopefully be a cohesive video. We'll see. But these are my thoughts on season one as a whole, not just this finale episode, the whole season. What I liked, what I didn't like, what I would change, and why I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. So first of all, let's talk about what I liked. Number one being the casting. And this was the biggest fear that fans had going into the season was the casting of Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey filling Joel and Ellie's shoes, and I thought both actors did a terrific job. They were extreme when they needed to be extreme. That scene with Ellie thinking she's about to be raped and killed, and the just terror that she was able to bring to that scene was so visceral and just felt so real. Um, and there were, you know, plenty of scenes like that throughout the show. Like I said, when they needed to be extreme, they were, but there was so much subtlety in their conversations and so much nuance and they portray they both portrayed a lot by doing very little in many scenes and i thought they both were fantastic i thought ellie was great in the show she's a little bit different than the she is in the game but i thought she worked really really well in the show and a lot of that has to do with bella ramsey production design top notch i thought they they really brought the game to the small screen in a way that felt so real to me. I thought it looked terrific. The infected, the few that we got, looked great. The world, the way that everything was just breaking down, it felt really, really real and really great. So production design, acting, like I said, the writing, all of the beats that we got in the show worked really, really well. What we got worked really, really well. So what's my main complaint is is that we didn't get enough of a lot of things. We didn't get enough infected. We didn't get enough character development. We didn't get enough time. And this kind of bleeds into what I would change. This season should have been two seasons. This shouldn't have been one season. They should have taken part one of the game and divided it up into two seasons. And they took a lot of liberties with the show in season one. They changed a number of things and mostly a lot of things for the better. So I don't think they had any fears in changing things when they felt like they needed to be changed. And, you know, Neil Druckmann was one of the writers on the show. So if anyone could have taken part one of the game and expanded upon it to make it two seasons, it's him. So that would have been my biggest change. And I think by making this season one two seasons, we would have had more time to spend not only in the world, but with the characters to develop certain characters much, much more. Tommy, for example, we got about 40 minutes of screen time with Tommy in this season one, and for me, that's nowhere near enough. Given where the show has to go, Tommy needed to be in the show more. His relationship with Joel needed to be explored more and given more depth, and we needed to really, really feel their bond. And I don't think we did. We can't do that in 40 minutes of screen time with a character. Tess, I think it would have been great to give more screen time to her, and again, mostly her relationship with Joel. So that when, spoiler alert, by the way, for season one, I'm going to be obviously talking about everything that happened in season one. So Tess, when she dies, I feel like that could have had more emotional impact if she was in it for more than, you know, a grand total of an episode and a bit. Sam and Henry, their their episode was terrific, and I thought it was heartbreaking, but it didn't have the emotional punch that it could have had if they were in the show for longer. Again, you would have been changing the game a little bit, but even in the game, they're in it longer than they were in the show. So I think to give them two or three episodes instead of one episode probably would have been a better service to those characters and also Joel and Ellie like I said these actors brought so much to these characters and to the roles and they're the reason that we felt the bond between the two of them as as much as we did by the end of season one but for me we still didn't get to where we needed to get in their relationship considering where the show has to go and considering the the payoff that we were supposed to get at the end of this season it just didn't quite feel like we got there and I think the biggest reason is just time we didn't get enough time we only really get six episodes with Joel and Ellie and their relationship. That is not a lot of time to really, really cement their relationship and their bond by the end of season one. So, I mean, I've already said how I would change this. I would divide it up into two seasons, but the way it would have been structured for me is we would have spent more time with Tommy and Joel after Sarah's death exploring Stitch. Hi. Are you coming to join me? Come here. Hi. Hi. Okay, so Stitch is going to be with me for the rest of this review, apparently. So, 
I would have spent more time with Joel and Tommy. A couple episodes kind of showing everything that they go through, you know, the, the fight for survival, because we're told by other characters that they did a bunch of stuff, but we never see it. I would have preferred to see some of that with Tommy and kind of what they went through to survive and then why they parted ways and what happened there. We could have spent more time kind of establishing the Fireflies and the Fedra and that conflict. I would have introduced Tess, you know, after we spent a little bit of time with Tommy and Joel, but Tess definitely would have had more time with Joel before we meet Ellie. And at the same time, while I, while we're exploring Tommy and Joel and Tess, we could have been seeing a bit more of Ellie with the Fireflies and maybe showing more of her relationship with Riley um, so that that episode didn't have to be at the mall episode with Riley, didn't have to be a flashback. We could have seen that as the, her story's progressing in a linear way. And then they all come together and say episode four, episode five, and then we get about three episodes with the three of them starting their journey out and Tess can die at the end of episode eight. And then Tess can tell Joel, you know, like you have to get this girl to where she needs to go. You have to promise me. And so she dies and then Joel and Ellie start on their journey together. That would have been the end of season one for me. And that propels you into a season two. And we know what's at stake for a season two and where it's going. Season one, I mean, I have the benefit of watching the show with my wife who's never played the games and doesn't know anything about the characters or where the show's going. So for her, the end of season one felt kind of like, that's it? That's that's how it ends? Okay, all right. Like, it, it was, it, it's lacking. Like, if you haven't played the game, you don't know where it's going. Season one just kind of ends. And it, for me... I don't need cliffhangers all the time, but for me, it would have been nice to have a direction that we know we're heading in season two and something to look forward to. And, you know, we know what the stakes are going to be going forward. And then season two, we could have spent more time with Joel and Ellie on their journey. We could have had more overall, more run-ins with Infected. I didn't need a bunch of, you know, Walking Dead zombies in my Last of Us show, but we only got a few encounters with the infected and for me it made the world feel kind of safe i mean after henry and sam die we cut to three months later and it's kind of like okay i guess they didn't really do anything in three months they just walked across the country and obviously they didn't have any problems so the whole journey felt kind of safe and then so you get to the end and it's like we're really desperate for this cure but me as an audience member i'm thinking it's not that bad like yeah it'd be great to have a cure so people don't you know die if they get bitten, but it seems pretty easy to avoid them. It's not that bad. And that's where, for me, again, I would have made a bit of a change because they established in, I don't remember if it's episode one or episode two, that there's, it's all interconnected. Like you, if you step on part of the fungi that's alive here, it'll communicate, you know, go underground and communicate to other infected. You know, it could be across the city and it could wake up an entire horde and they can come running after you. They established that. And it was relevant for Tess's, for Tess's death. But then after that, it's never touched upon again. It's never a threat. They don't ever do anything with that. And I thought that was a really cool addition that they didn't explore. So that also is a missed opportunity for me. Like, I kind of feel like season one is a missed opportunity. Okay. But all of this is to say that overall, I did enjoy season one. I thought it was a solid season of television. I would give it a B plus. Still good just not great and I feel like we could have reached those heights so those are my overall thoughts for season one looking forward to season two don't know if I'll be here to talk about season two or not but I appreciate you tuning in to listen to my thoughts on season one and whatever you thought comment down below I will be very curious to hear your thoughts as well thank you so much for listening